Okay, so we are working on the head. And um, I looked around, saw what people were doing, and I got inspired because these tusks, they're just not all that interesting, right? There's kind of bony, bony horns, but teeth. So if I go back to Chrome, whoops, not that one. Go back to Chrome. Let's see, do I have it open still? There we go. Let's look up um, antlers. Because you can use horns and use them as teeth. Now those antlers, those are a little crazy for teeth. So maybe ram's horns. And these might make more interesting tusks. It's always nice that they have like just a clean background. It makes them easy to cut out. But I'm looking for lighting and angle. So often you need to go back to, to getting reference. That works better. This actually looks pretty useful. So I'm just going to try this one for now. Do you see how much texture those have? Quite a bit more interesting than what I was using. This is actually pretty good too. Okay. Minimize that. Bring those in. Remember, Pixabay just automatically goes to your downloads folder, for better or worse. Okay. Bring in the smart layer, plenty big. Let's flip it horizontally. Shrink it down a little bit. Start thinking about this. Especially maybe just that, that bottom jaw could be interesting as well. Maybe warp it a little bit. Yeah, I'm liking that. Maybe give a little mouth and some expression. That doesn't mean I'm going to use the neck or anything of this animal, but I'm using the mouth. It's one thing that might be useful. That might be all I want from that reference. In fact, I'm just going to cut that out with some overlap. Command J. Then I'm going to bring it in again, and this time I'm going to use the tusks, the horns. And I, let's see, bring it up to the top, and I cut them out. Maybe one at a time. Just rough. Duplicate. Now that's its own layer. Go back to the other one. Cut it out. Rough. Rough cuts. Duplicate. Get rid of the original. Play with this one first. Where do I want it?
think right there. Go to the next one. How do I want it? I think I'll need to warp this one just a little. And there, and I want to sync that back behind. Okay. Now, how do I put this all together? Well, the one perspective that doesn't quite work is just the tip of that snout. So I'm going to go there. Well, where is it? There it is. And I'm just going to try to warp that tip. And you know what? I can actually do it by selecting the snout that I've cut out, duplicating it, and then just warping the duplicate so I have more control. We'll be learning how to do something called puppet warp later when we animate, but this is just internal compositing. And I can change the angle without having to change everything else. Okay, now though, I want to combine that with my other snout layer. So before that, I want to make sure I use a soft edged eraser and kind of blend it in. And then I want to maybe burn the bottom of it a little bit. The shadows match. Maybe even dodge the top of it a little bit. So we're kind of using all techniques at once. Okay, now I can start combining. So I want to combine those two layers. It's the snow. So now that's one. I want to take the mouth, where is it, right here, stretch that a little bit, warp it a little bit, to go with what I have. That works. Okay, now I want to just get rid of all that green, except for a little sliver, so I can do a more fine cutout later. Like so. Okay. And now I can see the antlers a little bit better. And what it's all going to look like. So how can I get rid of the green on those? Well, let's go ahead and try magic wand with contiguous. Nope. Wrong layer. There we go. Go ahead and add that one in. Delete. Good enough for now. This one, let's try the green. Hold down shift. Delete that, good enough for now. Little debris we'll have to take care of. And then this one, get rid of the green, hold down shift, add to it. I don't want it biting into my tusk. Luckily the green is pretty different. Delete. All right. Now I want to go back to that base layer. And really get rid of quite a bit. Do kind of a rough, rough cut of it. It's a little bit harsher now. I don't need much of this anymore. Okay. 
Okay. So now I've got a head. It might need a little refinement, a little cutting out, but I've got the head. So what am I going to do with that? Well, I can throw out the layers I don't need. And what I'm going to do is for the first time, we're going to make a group. So these are all the components of the head. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers. I select them all and then I click on the folder within the layer window. And it puts them all into a group. I'm going to mark it with a color by right clicking and I'm going to name that group head. <laughs> so now, even though there are separate layers I can still work with, whoops, if I select it by the group, and you can do auto select by layer or by group, then I can move it all around. So now I need the body. So I can get rid of this stuff. Don't need that, don't need this, don't need this. I've got the head. At least a good start of the head. I might do some more with orchids and stuff. But I tend to overdo things. Now I'm going to go to the coat, the body. And <laughs> we're talking about a, uh, a seascape that I made, even though you don't need to design your creature for the seascape, but it looks pretty rough, right? There's sea coral and stuff. So this to me is a good body to use. And it's got the right angle of the head. So what am I gonna do? I bring it in, it's already around the right size, bigger than I need. I use my lasso and I'm just gonna rough cut like a sticker around it. I know I don't need these horns, but I want as much of the rest of it as possible. And yes, it will be a pain to cut this out, but those textures are awesome. And then I hit Command J to duplicate that, and I delete the smart layer underneath. Now if I take the head and I just move that on top of it, you can start to see what happens. And then I can even turn off this layer and you can start to see what's needed and what's not needed. So then I might go back to the head and delete some more from it. I might also take the whole head and command T it to shrink a little. Because remember, I need it to all fit within that 11 by 14. It's okay to build it a little oversized, but you don't want to build it so oversized that it can't fit. Okay, so now I need to make the body work for the head. And a good way to do that is to try warping it. And again, you're thinking of your sketch and you're thinking of where your collarbones are, how wide it is. So I'm going <coughs> to widen out the chest. Stretch it on both sides, you're like rolling it like dough. I'm going to tuck the pelvis up and under a little bit. This will help it match the perspective, but I want that big rib cage. I want all those messy textures. Okay, that looks better. Okay, now I can go back to the head and blend it in. I'm just going to take that back layer and I'm going to use that big eraser, 100% opacity and like 0% hardness, take away that hard edge. 